morning. And welcome. I invite you to rise as we begin our order service. We make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say that we have no sin. We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are righteous and holy. We ask that you would not forgive us our sins, but forgive us our sins, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake has forgiven all of your sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the Word, I announce the grace of God to each of you, and in the stead and by the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I forgive all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house. And the Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. And I trust in the Lord God with you. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord. Proclaim thanksgiving now and tell me all your wondrous deeds. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house. And the place where your glory dwells. In peace, let us pray to our Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to our Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to our Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to our Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to His people on earth.
You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament lesson for this morning is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 29. And the vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, Read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, Read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, Because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men, Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who keep hide, keep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, Who sees us? Who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay, that the thing made should say of its maker, he did not make me. Or the thing formed, say to him who formed it, he has no understanding. Is it not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field? And the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest. In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a, of a book. And out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord. And the poor among mankind shall exalt in the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of our Lord. Be to God. Yeah, the lesson then is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. Wives, submit to your, own, to your own husbands as to the Lord. The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies, he who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise for the Alleluia. According to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Now, when the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and even dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you. Hypocrites, As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. 
And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is Corbin, that is, given to God. Then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And many such things, and many such things you do. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated for the sermon hymn. Lord, help us ever to repent. opportunity to come before you to worship and to praise, to give all honor and glory to you. Now may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our meditation indeed be pleasing to you. In your name we pray. Amen. This morning we shall take a look at our gospel text. But this gospel text of ours kind of leaves us scratching our heads just a bit. For we perhaps are accustomed that when we take a look at a text, especially the gospel, that there is probably going to be some kind of specific reference to the cross, to the empty tomb, or perhaps in that wider sense, the good news of Jesus Christ. And yet here today we find a text in the gospels, no less, that seems to not have any gospel in it whatsoever. The narrow sense of cross and the empty tomb, or that wider sense of the good news of Jesus Christ. And so maybe we're scratching our heads a little bit going, maybe we should look at one of the other texts assigned for today to see Jesus, to understand, to be comforted, to be strengthened. But yet it is our gospel text here that will point our eyes to Christ that will fix our faith upon Him, 
that will reassure us that Christ is here this day, walking with us and doing life with us. As oftentimes it turns out to be that uh, we find an old extra gospel nugget when we take a look at the original Hebrew or the Greek. And the Hebrew word that I want to look at today is simply rakets. And it simply in English refers to washing, whether it's your hands or to a pot or to silverware or even our text says the dining couch that they uh, were enjoying that meal. The Pharisees came to Jesus that day and said, hey, you know what? Your people, your disciples, your students are sitting down to the table and they have not washed their hands. What's going on here? And Jesus starts to talk to them. This is one of those texts when I was just little. I thought, hey, all right. I've got biblical evidence for why I do not have to wash my hands before dinner. Unfortunately, for me and anybody else who is thinking that way, that's not what it's talking about. We're not talking about a practical, sanitary type thought process that we should get all that dirt out from under our fingernails before we sit down and have a piece of chicken or beef or whatever is fixed for dinner. But rather, this is more of a tradition thing. This is more of a ceremonial thing. And Jesus talks to them and says, you know what? That, you know that prophet Isaiah lived a few years ago? You probably know him well, or at least his readings well. Well, did he say when he was talking about your mouth may say all the right words, but your heart certainly isn't in the right place. You talk about the commandments of men and the traditions of mankind, but the things of God, that's for perhaps the next person. Or maybe it's more that you have incorrectly understood what the commandment of God is. And so you have turned it into this ritualistic, ceremonial mambo-jambo about worshiping and washing hands and doing all this stuff to make yourselves look good rather than using it to see God. Case in point, man that we all know, King David, he's a super neat guy, as the scriptures tell us. He had his moments, of course, like everybody. But at the same time, he also had his Lord and Savior. He also had the forgiveness of sins. And he had his eyes fixed upon God. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, this is kind of getting to the end of his career, you might say, rather than close to his, the beginning of his career as being king. But his son Absalom has decided that he could do a better job of being king. And he basically tells David, Dad, that's fine. You, you go, go away. I'll be king. I can do this better. All that kind of fun, rebellious type stuff. And David... In a sense, says, okay, you know what, I'm out of here. I'm going back into, uh, oh, what's my word? I'm going back into, I can't think of the word. He's going away to get out of the way, to save himself, to all that kind of a thing. And as he's getting ready to go into captivity, there's a good word that I should have said a moment ago. As he's willing, getting ready to go into captivity, with his priests, his commanders, his army, his whoever, his family, I suppose. The priests bring out the Ark of the Covenant, thinking, hey, this is a good thing. We should make sure that this foreign power, even though it's the son of the king, David himself, this foreign power, as, as they were looking at this upstart, this naughty little kid who doesn't know anything, we should bring this Ark of the Covenant with us. Make sure he doesn't do anything that would defile the Ark, the inappropriate. Remember how many times people touched the Ark of the Covenant and fell over dead. You know, maybe this is just trying to be nice to our neighbor too. You know, if you touch this incorrectly, you know, it, does, it usually doesn't work out well for the human. All that kind of a thing. But David says to him, no, you guys, I understand. I appreciate your sentiment. That's a good thing. We always want to go with God. But that's just it. God's always already with us. We don't need the ark. We don't need this or that to remind us that 
God is already with us. And so we shall worship God and not the trappings of God, not the traditions, not the commandments, not the ceremony. And so perhaps words that these Pharisees would be good to remember. This washing, this rakets, this washing, <coughs> excuse me, what does it mean? It perhaps transports us back into the New Testament a little bit to another time where we see the washing of hands. Holy Week itself. Pontius Pilate is before Jesus, or I suppose as we read the time, Jesus was before Pontius Pilate, right? But Pilate is looking at the crowds, and he's seeing a, a riot begin to form. The people are upset. The army is getting, having to start really getting out their spears and their muscle and whatnot to keep these guys back. They aren't, in a sense, listening to reason. Plus, Pilate is thinking, you know, Jesus, what, what has he done wrong? This man seems to be innocent, certainly not deserving of death. Had him be beaten and whipped and all that kind of thing, thinking that would perhaps satisfy the crowd's lust for punishment for this guy, for speaking out of turn or not washing his hands, I guess, huh? But Pilate eventually gets to the point, no, this isn't how it's going down. And so I'm going to... Raquettes. I'm going to wash my hands of the whole thing. Let this blood be on you. Jesus goes to the cross and he suffers and dies. He rises again on the third day. And so now we have a whole new thought about what this raquettes, this washing is about. As it points us to Jesus. Another way to understand to translate raquettes, to wash, is to wash away, to wash off. And so, going a bit further into the New Testament now, to the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 14. Words that perhaps you have heard before, perhaps even know it well. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This last week I took my robe into the dry cleaners to get it cleaned and so forth after many, many Sundays out there in the heat of the summer. The, and I, from my perspective, even the heat of the winter. But anyway, it's a different thought. Uh, anyway, my robe needed to be cleaned. Certainly it looks a lot better, smells a lot better, all that kind of thing. But it it's going to pale in comparison to what this idea of washing in the blood of the Lamb really and truly means. And it brings our eyes to Christ through the words of holy baptism. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in that baptism, in that washing, it's not just a ritualistic cleansing of the hands, the pots, the couch, the whatever. But rather it is a ritualistic cleaning of us, ourselves. As God washes away sin, death, and the power of the devil himself. And we see Christ living in our lives. We see Christ doing life with us. We see Christ going before us that we can take this word of God to all people, that we are able to minister to all people, not in the sense of doing a certain tradition, remembering a certain ceremony, doing a certain whatever, but rather bringing Christ himself and the word of God to people. And so while this gospel text really did not seem to contain a whole lot of gospel itself. But boy, did it bring us to the cross. Boy, did it remind us of who we are and reminding us that in Christ, we have been washed with the blood of the Lamb Himself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. At this time, if there's any, uh, I see a few children out there, but if they want to come up for a brief message, I would invite them to do so now.
comes a couple. All my little ones came to the first service this morning, so. See a couple more coming up this, yet, so. How are you guys all doing this morning? You doing all right? Good, awesome. Well, here's a fantastic thought for you today. How many of you like Christmas? Yeah? Good. What, when you think of Christmas, what's one thing that maybe is the very first thing that you're going to say? What, if you see this, what does it remind you of Christmas? Trying to read my thoughts, huh? What is Pastor Mark after? I didn't really set that up very well. Christmas tree. If you see a Christmas tree, what are you going to think of? Jesus? Christmas? Christmas Eve show? Singing songs? Santa? Presents, right? Christmas, what? Ham, turkey? Big meal? Seeing Grandma and Grandpa? Yeah? When you see that Christmas tree, there's a, we, we, there's an opportunity to see all the traditions, all the things that can kind of get in the way. But I've heard some of you say that when you think of the Christmas tree, you think of Jesus. That we can use the Christmas tree and all the other things like that to remind us of what Jesus did for us. That Jesus came, and in the theme of Christmas, was born to take away our sins. So when you see the Christmas tree, even when you see a cross, or maybe even the Easter bunny, you can remind yourself of what Jesus did for us. So, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for sending your Son, Jesus, to be our Lord and Savior. Enable each of us, Lord, that when we see the different things of this world, to see you and what you have done for us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. Wow. And I would invite uh, you to rise as we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He rose again on the third day, and he appeared to Peter, and then to all the apostles. After that, he ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Thank you to each of you who have brought your tithings and gifts for the Lord and placed them in the back. And as they are brought forward, we shall sing our offertory.
Heavenly Father, again we thank you this morning that you have created us, that you have sent your Son to be our Lord and Savior. That even through the very traditions and ceremonies of our lives, you come shining through as the object, as the as a thing that we focus upon to see just what faith means to have in you. As you sent that more specific of object lessons, but it's even more so than just an object lesson, for it is your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ Himself. We thank you and we praise you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, as you have come to this world to be that, not only that object lesson, but to also be that Savior, that God who loves us, that God who instills in us the desire to proclaim your name, not only to ourselves, but to those around us. We thank you and we praise you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, as you work with us to praise your name to all those people around us, to ourselves, in such a way that we would not be distracted by the traditions of man, but be focused upon what you have done for us through the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that in and through him, our robes have been washed. That is to say, we have been washed with the blood of the Lamb. We thank you and we praise you. And Lord, as you do life with us each and every day, we ask that you would instill in us a certain confidence, a certain humbleness to walk with you, that we would confess our sins, that we would be strengthened by the forgiveness of sins, and that we would proclaim your name to all people. And we thank you and we praise you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As a congregation, Lord, we come before you now with certainly thoughts of asking you to guide the events from our secular lives to our religious lives and everything in between. We thank you and we praise you. And we especially ask, Lord, that this day you would uh, send your healing hand to Raymond Kettler, Douglas Kettler, to the family of Josephine Schwartz, and to all others, Lord, who you might name within our hearts. We thank you and we praise you as we come forward this day with our hearts wide open. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, now as we come before you, we ask that you would teach us the prayer that you have taught us that we might say it boldly and confidently. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
Let us then continue with our Bible verse for the month of August. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. Psalms 119, verse 15. And our mission statement, representing God's love to our congregation, community, and the world. As we take a look at, uh, there's a couple of inserts. Uh, number one, thank you to all who helped out with the uh, fundraiser this last week at the fairgrounds. Really appreciated that. It was, I thought it was a great success. Uh, a lot of people turned out and made the job quite easy, uh, or easier, or however you want to look at that, I guess, huh? Uh, so uh, a real big thank you to each of you uh, for helping out with that. Uh, looking for, we're still looking for some Sunday school teachers, so if that's in your way of life, thought process, a sign-up sheet is over there in the information center. You can go and see uh, which one would work out the best for you. And you can sign up there. It's, I think it's directly under the American flag, so we're good and patriotic about that as well. Huh? Um, the next Sunday, week from today, is the, the Rally Sunday for the children. Uh, promotion Sunday, I've heard it called, too. Uh, but uh, you have this insert here. Today is your very last day, if you haven't had a chance to fill this out yet, uh, to have lunch with uh, the church next week. Uh, so fill that out, turn it in, and you'll be all set to go. And then uh, uh, congratulations to Lynn Van Eman and the Kinkos as they become grandparents. Well, Lynn became a grandparent. Lily and Grace became great grandparents. So congratulations to that family. Uh, oh, and then one other thing here. I'll my other insert, I guess. Huh? I, I just learned about this yesterday. So uh, uh, Josephine Schwartz, uh, she's the mother of Emmanuel Schwartz. Uh, Josephine has passed away this, uh, I got the impression fairly quickly and unexpectedly, uh, but uh, the funeral service will be on Wednesday, August 25th at 1 o'clock at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Beaumont. Uh, if you want more information, I have a number here for Emmanuel Schwartz uh, and all that kind of good stuff, so please see me if you would uh, like more information. So. Any other thoughts or announcements that you would like to share with the congregation? Certainly, it's good to see all of you here today and welcome, and especially if you are joining with us online, a uh, special welcome to you uh, this day. God's blessings.